Welcome to the intermediate class today. So it's really important that we understand that you elongate the spine. You can see all of a sudden that instruction and we all go up. But you've got to remember that it's a grounded element to this T. So taking the hands into a prayer position. Keep your chest lifted. Bow your heads. Release your hands to your thighs. Keep that lift through the center of the body. And now lift the head and open in your eyes. Well done. So when we come into dog pose, I'm gonna take the feet really wide today. And then coming up. Now when you come up, you've got to see that. Again, you've got to find that depth in the lower abdomen. Find the depth and then go up with the butter bones, up with the butter bones until you can cut back with these outer shins and outer thighs. Remember, this, this action is really, really key. Cut back with those outer legs. And be there. So just be in your pose, be in your Adha Mukha with those wide legs and with that connection of those outer seams of the leg. So those outer lines, imagine a pencil line going from your hip all the way to your ankle. Imagine that shifting back. Yes. And then releasing. Well done. All right. So just have a look at the screen for a moment. We're coming for Uttanasana, same thing. Wide legs, don't come into it yet. Now, again, we've got to see that to support the spine, we need to have good leg work. So the legs not only have to ground down, but also we've got to fill out into the seams. Now, once we fill out from the inner thigh to the outer thigh, these seams have got to go backwards. They've got to go back. You've got to train them to go back. And we come halfway in this position. Now, you can put your hands on bricks, no problem at all. If you need to have a little bit more height, that's fine. So be in your Uttanasana, just your fingers down, spider fingers, and find in that space. Find in that space. Come on, your turn. If you haven't already, if you're in it already, these are the instructions. You've got to see that you get so much breath in those legs, inner thighs to the bone, the bones to the outer thighs, the outer thighs, that seam that runs down from the hip all the way to the ankle needs to ground down, but also it's got to sharply cut back. It's got to sharply cut back, very, very sharply. Okay, and now slowly release them. All right, I've got two bricks here. Now you can use bricks or you can use a couple of foam pads, whatever you've got at home. Now I'm gonna bring the legs in a little bit further. So I'm in Tadasana. So being aware of Tadasana and how that feels on the pelvis, how this levelness is coming. Going to lift up nicely. All right. So what I want you to do with me, join in, see that you get the weight back, you're extending your arms forward, abdomen towards the spine, and then take the arms up, extend up, extend up, and then we're coming forward. Now when you come forward onto your bricks, see if you can flatten your hands, see if you can flatten your hands keeping the opening in the back of the pelvis. Taking the back leg back and then lifting the back leg up. So, those of you who are already in your Uttanasana, just have a little glance at the screen and see that one leg lifts. Pull up the kneecap and thigh. Okay, come on, your turn. Taking that left leg back in line with your hip. 
Go and see that you're getting that action nicely. Yeah. Come on, push back into the heel, even more so. Even more so, push back into the heel. Push back into the heel, very, very strongly. Okay, and releasing down. Keep the head down, keep the hands down. Okay, right leg this time, right leg this time. So taking that right leg back, pushing into the heel so much. Push very, very strongly into that heel. Keeping that action nicely. What's happening to the standing leg? Ground it down very strongly. Keep that extension, keep that pushing back. Well done, good. And release in, well done. Okay, so we take it a little step further now, just watch the screen. So what we're going to do here now is extend the leg back in this position, take the leg up, okay? Now we want to see, are we able to extend the leg back? So you're going to see, can you extend the leg back? Now notice, I'm just taking my time with this. I want to see that I cut back with that outer foot very strongly and keep this leg bent, keep this leg bent. So you want to see that in this position that you are really hinging at the hip and looking forward. And then we bring the bricks back again and we come up and we launch. So you get the idea, you bend the leg and you reach it away, you reach it away, you keep the leg bent and you keep in this position, you keep grounding down with that back leg and looking forward. And then you reach the arms, a couple of times, reach the arms forward. And then we step that leg up, extending up. So getting that nice angle on the leg. Okay, come on, a couple of times, another go. So if you've already started, I want you to go again. Reach that lifted leg back, and once you get it down to the floor, hit it very strongly in the outer foot bone. Well done. And then see, can you make more of a square with your front leg? Keep the front leg bent, keep it bent, keep it bent. Okay, now reach your bricks forward again. Reach them forward again, lift the leg back up so it's in line with the hip. One more go, extend back, come on, extend back, extend back, extend back, that's it. So you want to see that from here, from here you are extending back, extending back, keeping this leg nice and bent, pushing back very strongly with that back leg, looking forward, push back even more so, Draw the abdomen towards the spine. Looking forward. Taking the brick nicely. Extend it. Okay, another time, come on. If you haven't swapped sides, swap sides. Come on, two, three, four times. Extend. Taking your hands down. Reaching the hands forward, lifting the leg, reaching back, bringing those bricks back towards the foot side. Keeping that leg nice and bent another couple of times. Go and see that you're extending, extending forward, keeping that action, keeping that bend in that front leg. Keep it going, yes. All right, so if you've done three or four times on each side, honestly, then you can release. Well done. Now I'm just gonna step my legs into this action, pushing into the outer foot bones and seeing that I'm in this position. And again, gotta sharpen the action, pull up kneecaps and thighs. Now, as you extend 
through the center of the body, you've got to see that you're able to lift these frontal hip bones up. Now what tends to happen is you tend to tuck your belly and tuck your tailbone. You don't want to be doing that. You want to see that you get this really nice opening and lift, pull up the kneecaps and thighs and then we come forward. So extending forward nicely, taking the hands down, pulling up the kneecaps and thighs, being in this position. Now why I'm coming onto these bricks, and I know some of you will not be using these bricks, but I want you to see that you do. So if you're not using them, just grab a couple of supports of some kind, books, whatever you're using, and be in this position. The reason why is it gives you an opportunity to really ground down. Now what you want to do is to pull up the kneecap, but at the same time, push down with this energy going down from the outer foot bone really strongly and then we come into turning now you can only turn those bricks if you fold your abdomen towards your spine you've got to fold it in it folds and then of course we come into this action you can then take the buttocks up and take your hands down and just bend those elbows bend those elbows any amount and then let the head release down any amount. So it doesn't need to be on the floor. You've got a couple of bricks here. You can put a couple of bricks just for your head if need be. So have a go at it, work with it and see if you can get the height. Okay, so now we're going to come up. Well done. All right, so stand in Tadasana. Spread your toes. If you're not practicing Shishasana, what I'd like you to do is to work in this way. So kneeling, pushing down very strongly with the elbows, having your palms like this, you can see, on the brick and being sharp. Now lifting up and you'll do this a few times, so you're not going to stay here for the whole length of time, but lifting up, pushing away from the arms, so you want to make some space in the shoulder area. So in the outer shoulder area, you want to really make that space. Lifting up so much. So you might want to have a folded mat for this, and also if you've got really tight shoulders, you might want to put a belt around those upper arms. That would help as well. All right. Okay, so we're coming for Adha Mukha Virasana. Now those of you who are challenged by this because of the knee difficulties, then sit on a chair. Otherwise, you're going to take the, the big toes together and extend forward in this way. So you're extending forward and you're really reaching out at that lower back region. So you want to see that you are getting that nice opening in the back. And of course, those of you on the chair, you'll be doing a similar action, still supporting the head, still supporting the hands. Take a few breaths, soft inhalation and exhalation. Okay, well done. Those of you able to bend the knee, then just take a look at the screen. All right, so we're going to take our heels up. So it's quite high, this position, quite high. You're going to take your heels up like this. All right, so again, those of you who are unsure, it's difficult to bend the knee, then have a look at the screen now. All right, so we're coming into this Malasana action. Now, it's sometimes really nice to come on to quite a high support. So what we're going to do in this action is to come into this turning action. So you can notice here that it's quite a job because what you want to do is to 
really twist the body a little bit. You need to try to keep the thighs in line and the action comes within the body. So you want to see that you lift from the base and up and come into that turning position like that. And breathe. So this is called a Pasasana action. So again, if you're struggling with this action, you can go by the wall, you can put your hands onto the wall, or you can go back to the chair. So hopefully you're just sorting out your props, seeing what suits the best for your body. All right, so those of you in the center of the room, then see that you're on those heels and you're getting that turning action. You've got to lift and turn and lift and turn and lift and turn. Okay, well done. All right, and releasing, so whichever way you're working, you can release and now come to the other side. So again, you want to see that you're getting that really nice action of twisting. So when you twist, you gotta see that you get that lift in the abdomen and you're finding that turn in action. So it's quite a challenge, pasasana, quite a challenging twist. So once you have done both sides, then coming out of the pose. All right, so just have a look at the screen now. So we're going to come for this preparation. So the knees are bent and then we come forward. So everybody can come to this action um, if you don't have to bend your knees so much. So walking those feet along and coming forward. See that you release into your lower back. You've got to find that lower back action. And you need to be in this position for a little while because it takes a while for all of this area to open and release. It certainly does. All right, so what we're going to do now is to see if we can take our arms around, around like this. So they come inside so it's almost like you've got a shoulder bag <laughs> now it's really good to take the legs a little bit wider if you're new to this you can take your legs a little bit wider and still get that action now you want to see that you use your hands to go back into your spine so that as you go back you can go a little bit more forward like this So you can see that action. Now, it's quite challenging really for people to get that far down without catching their bellies and all of this kind of stuff goes on. So you want to sit onto some support if this is the case. If you're happy just carrying on, then carry on. But I'm just gonna show you a couple of ways which is gonna really help you to understand the pose a little bit more. So you can sit higher like this and then see how we need you to really energize these areas at the beginning. Okay, so you can have this quite high and you can just rest onto it like this. So if you are challenged by this pose, this kind of comes into a halfway position. So you can see there that that works quite nicely. All right, so well done. You've probably had enough of that now. All right, and releasing and sit in Dandasana. All right, so it's quite an extreme forward bend. So let's come back to neutralizing the body again. So being Dandasana, grounding down with those legs really nicely, taking your hands down beside you 
pulling the kneecaps right up into the thighs, drawing the abdomen towards the spine. All of this is very important. Spread your toes, spread your toes and breathe. Just take a few moments to really get that breath, that awareness. See if you can take your abdomen towards your spine. Okay, and then release in. So we're gonna come for Shavasana now. So I'm sure you'll all be very pleased about this. So we come into this action. And we're just going to rest our arms and then extend the legs away. And just take a few deeper, longer, inhalations. Just be in your Shavasana. 